Hey, what's good, everybody? You know what time it is. Your boy Jeffrey Elvoni here for another live edition of Real Talk Junkies. So glad to have you join us on today. As always, we're going to have great dialogue, great discussion, great guests, and uh, of course, there's you. I want to encourage you to join in on the chat. If you got anything to say, ask. Make sure you chime in in the chat and engage with me. Of course, I want everybody to go visit forwardtimes.com. Again, that's forward times.com to check out the latest news for and about the black community and of course you can always engage with me at my personal website jeffreylboney.com and that's jeffreylboney.com and pick up the latest book don't argue with me a no-nonsense approach to the issues in the black community i'm gonna get right into it y'all today is february the 8th 2023 and today is a very very special day in the life of in my life as well as the life of my family the life of many people who i consider to be my fellow alums of a school that is the greatest high school on the planet in the universe in the galaxy i'm talking about none other than john henry jack yates high school the mighty lions of jack yates high school right in the heart of third ward named after none other than the reverend john henry jack yates so we're excited about yates high school uh, I am the president of the Jack Yates National Alumni Association, and we have a lot of individuals that have come through those hallowed halls of Jack Yates High School. I mean, my grandfather, his brothers and sisters were one of the first graduates of Jack Yates High School. When it was over at uh, where Ryan Middle School is now, and uh, James D. Ryan uh, was the first principal of that school. And then you had my daddy, my aunts, my uncles, my cousins, me, and a slew of other individuals that came through the hallowed halls of Jack Yates High School in three different locations we've been since we started as the second oldest high school in the city of Houston. 97 years old on today, and before I get into the rest about Jack Yates, I want to give a huge shout out to LeBron James, the king, the goat, for breaking the all-time scoring record that was held for many, many years by Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. I wanted to get that shout in because there's a lot of hating going on on LeBron James, and he deserves his flowers, and I want to make sure I give them to him. But joining me today are two individuals that are very, very passionate about Jack Yates High School. Know a lot of history, not about only about Jack Yates High School, but Third Ward that are constantly trying to figure out ways in which we can improve our school, protect our legacy, and uh, preserve our legacy, and also do what we can do to make sure we protect our school and take care of those students over there. So we never forget why this school is named after who it's named after of when it was opened up back on February the 8th, 1926, 97 years ago today, y'all, Jack Yates High School was born, and we're here to celebrate it on today. And uh, come on up, Carl Davis and Mr. Ted, come on up. <laughs> Straight out of what? Jack, Jack Yates. Yates. All right. All Straight right. out of what? Jack Yates. Okay. Established okay. okay. 1926, y'all. All right. right. I have Gotta one represent. Those. You got one of these? Yes, indeed. Right. Right. in the house. Get right in the house. house. And, and, of course, <laughs> and, of course, I'm wearing my wristband, y'all. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, uh, it says, uh, you know, it, it says Jack Yates, class of the best class ever, <laughs> 1991. Debatable. I just want to let everybody know that that's under the sound of my voice, as they say in church, and of course that's sitting on the stage with me right now, that the class of 1991 was the best class ever. But anyway, we're not going to get into all that today. We're going to get into We'll talk later. Okay, we'll talk later. First of all, thank you all for being on Real Talk Junkies on today. So excited to have you guys join us. This is a great day uh, in, in Houston uh, and in, in black history. Uh, because this school, the second oldest black high school in the city of Houston, the fourth largest city in the United States, is something to be celebrated, that we're still here, uh, we're still celebrating, and we're still moving forward. Uh, I had the great privilege today, gentlemen, of going over to, to the school and doing the announcements uh, on Founders Day and reminding our current students about the rich history of our school and joining other students and being able to do so. So introduce yourself starting with you and uh, let everybody know who you are and what class you graduated from. Well, uh, first of all, uh, uh, Dr. Jeffrey uh, L. Boney, <laughs> uh, I want to make one uh, uh, correction. We're the third largest city in oh, this Oh, okay, okay. Oh, okay. No, we'd have moved up. We'd, we'd have moved, moved up. up. Okay, okay. okay. I, like didn't, I didn't think the census number pushed us <laughs> over the three. Okay. But, but um, you know, I'm going to listen to you. <laughs> but thank you. For if anybody that. knows anything about what it's called, David, you know everything, right? Thank you for this opportunity. I'm Carl Davis, uh, 
proud Jack Gates alumni. You see, I'm wearing the color. Yes, I do. You know, I, I was not coming on your show without representing Absolutely. Jack Gates. So we're well. talking about Jack Gates yes. High School. And on our founder's day, the yes. 97th year of the existence of that school. I'm Carl Davis from the class of 1972. One of the best class that yes. walked the halls of Jack Gates High School. One of, yeah, one of, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Go right ahead. And, 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 and yourself, sir. I, I'm Ted Robertson. Yes. Uh, proud uh, graduate of the Jack Gates class of 1971, okay. which is officially the best class. I beg to differ with Mr. <laughs> Boney. However, we will talk later, as we said earlier. Well, I, I just but, wrote a book called Don't Argue With Me. So oh, oh, okay. You can't well, argue with me on this okay. show. Okay, yeah. we, we might let that pass. Yeah. But uh, uh, we, we, we came out, came over there in 1968, and it was a tumultuous time. Uh, civil rights movement was live and kicking. Yeah. And uh, we, we're proud to say that we brought Jack Yates from segregation to a period of integration. Yeah. And uh, we, as far as I know, we're the largest graduating class in the history of Jack Yates High School. How many people? I think 540 plus. Wow. Like that. Wow, that's humongous. Yeah. So, so you know, you bring up a great point, good segue, question-wise. Um, you talk about uh, segregation and moving into what I call so-called integration. Oh, okay. I mean, the resources didn't come. <laughs> right. You know, they just said on paper that we all... You're integrated okay. <laughs> and we're all right. right. But, you know, considering this was uh, birthed in 1926, mm -hmm. I mean, there was a lot that happened prior uh, to, of course, uh, 1926, but also even after the Great Depression and many other things happened in the 30s, etc. But it was birthed during a time where we were coming off the heels of the Emancipation Proclamation less than 50 years right. uh, after the Emancipation Proclamation was signed and then course, the Ku Klux Klan was at its height. Uh, African Americans were actively involved in politics, uh, were getting positions as governors and senators and, and, and making moves. But then you had, uh, you know, people like a John Henry Jack Yates, uh, who was fresh out of being enslaved. I don't like calling our, our people slaves uh, because we didn't volunteer exactly. to be Not slaves. Uh, so we were enslaved uh, people of African descent. And with that, you know, he came out and had the foresight. Yes. He had the foresight to talk about starting uh, schools and churches and businesses and purchasing land mm -hmm. and taking over, in essence. You know, not just saying, you know, what do we do now? He actually had a vision. Right. And, and, you know, keep in mind, this man, you know, uh, came out of slavery. Right. You know, and, and so to have someone like him come out along with uh, the other three men uh, who, who actually came together with what I want to say five hundred dollars mm -hmm. to acquire a thousand dollars, a thousand dollars, thank you, thousand mm -hmm. dollars to acquire what we now know as Emancipation Park. You know, these are visionaries and exactly. people that we should celebrate, and that's why this school is so important. And, and Jeff, uh, one point about Jack Yates was that he was free, uh, but then he went back into slavery. You know, to, because of his family. Yeah. And so that took a lot because uh, it shows that he had a lot of fortitude and that uh, he had a vision to keep his family together. Yes. And when uh, Emancipation Proclamation came out and they were actually freed again, he, uh, as you stated, he had the foresight, you know, to purchase land, mm -hmm. uh, start business, start churches, bringing black folks together, yes. uniting black folks, yes. as he did when in the purchase of the Emancipation Park. He pulled together three other men, John Allen, Robert Brock, and uh, Elijah Dibble, mm -hmm. and they pulled those resources together seven years after the Emancipation Proclamation was signed in Galveston in 1865 to purchase a land where they, black folks, have the opportunity to celebrate mm -hmm. their freedom. And that was the first land purchased, well, uh, first public space purchased by uh, black folks mm -hmm. to celebrate, and the first park, rather, Mm -hmm. in the state of Texas. So that's history within itself. Mm -hmm. He was truly a history maker, and I'm proud to be an alumni of a school named in his honor yeah. because he set the tone and the pace for all of us, those of us who've gone through that high school. If we know his history, we can build on his history. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. So how did you end up at, at Jack Yates High School? What was your, what was your pathway? My, I started at uh, Julius Norton Dotson Elementary. Dotson Elementary. Right. Me too. Montessori. Uh, it was right. called when I, when I went there. Yeah. It was called so that was years after me. Yeah. <laughs> Just a few. And, and then, yeah. And then I went to, to James D. Ryan. Yeah. Um, 
play football and coach Johnny B. Feld and Timothy Moon, two of the greatest middle school coaches in the history of Houston, probably Texas, and then on to Jack Yates. And uh, the, the thing that, that brought me to Jack Yates, that made me cognizant of the importance of Jack Yates, I, I looked at what it took for a man that was freshly out of being enslaved to have those uh, ideas to for education and, and basically improvement of, of his family, his race. He had to have, uh, those ideas originated when he was enslaved. Yes. So he was thinking about this all along. Even though he was oppressed at that particular time, like you said, he was a visionary. He was thinking about, you know, when I get out of this, not mm -hmm. if, but when. Mm -hmm. He had faith. And it just get, makes me think that today, even though we're not where we're supposed to be, with the resources that afforded, uh, that afforded us, we need, we're, it's incumbent on us as Jack Yates alumni to perpetuate the history of that man, that school. Mm -hmm. And then you add to the fact that that school, who's named after this, this historic uh, black man, now has a football field that's named after a social justice martyr, mm -hmm. George Floyd. Mm -hmm. So these are uh, strong points that the, the children coming up, the children that are there currently, you need to know your history. You cannot know where you're going if you don't know where you've been. Yes. And it's incumbent on us to pass that along to them, show them the importance of knowing that and passing it on. It's like when the elders in the, in the, in the, in the, in the motherland told stories, this is how your history was passed down. Mm -hmm. We have to do that today. Yes. And, and there, there has to be unity to do that. Yes. Like I said, we, it takes a village. We are part of that village, the yes. Jack Hayes village. And this thing not only can spread Jack Gates, you have like what I view as cornerstones of black education in Houston, Jack Gates, Booker T. Washington, Worthing, Wheatley, even Cashmere. These schools are historic. I speak of Jack Gates because I'm from Jack Gates, and it was always my dream to be a quarterback at Jack Gates High School, and I did that. Mm -hmm. And I didn't make it to the NFL, but I, I had fun doing that at Jack Gates. But Jack Gates has opened the doors for so many professional athletes, and not only athletes, we produce doctors, Lawyers, pharmacists, politicians, uh, people of integrity. Entertainment industry. Right, entertainment industry. So th these things are important so that the children can understand this is why I go to Jack Yates. This is why Jack Yates has this big following. Mm -hmm. Not just because we were good football players, because of the history mm -hmm. of Jack Yates. Yes, who he, who he is. Who he is. Not just who he was. Exactly. Uh, who he is today. Uh, right. And we should remember him as. Uh, what about you, Carl? How'd you end up? At Jack Yates. Well, my pathway started at Douglas Elementary. Uh, then I went to Ryan, of course, you know, J. J. D. Ryan. J. D. Cubs. Because. Because. Ryan Cubs. And, and then, you know, my family, you know, uh, my mother, my aunts and uncles, all of them, uh, when they moved uh, from Chapel Hill, Washington County, uh, in the late 30s, uh, they all went to Jack Yates High School, which was located on Elgin Street. So my uncles, my cousins, you know, just like a family thing. Uh, We've had so many uh, uh, descendants of, um, of my grandmother to go to Jack Gates High School. So it's like a, a family legacy. You know, you have to go to Jack Gates because that's part of our legacy. And we are so, uh, uh, they moved from Washington County, uh, Chapel Hill, Texas, you know, that's where the good sausage is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, we know about that. But they came to Houston and, and landed in Third Ward. And my uncles in the 50s played football, uh, basket, uh, basketball. Went to Tuskegee. One, my oldest uncle, uh, my mother's youngest brother, brother went to Tuskegee on uh, scholarship, but he went to Jack Gates. Uh, her youngest brother went to Prairie View, played basketball. All of them, my aunts, I have cousins who was Miss Gates. So mm -hmm. you know, it's like a family thing, and and it's read it in me. It's embedded in me that uh, it's a uh, a family legacy. That's mm -hmm. how we look at it. Mm -hmm. And we encourage everybody, if you can get to Jack Yates, get there as fast as you can. Get there as fast as you can. <laughs> and you know what's interesting, you brought up something, uh, you mentioned sports mm -hmm. uh, and your, your passion to play sports and whatever, and, and how we're known, uh, not just for football, of course that was the, the, the primary right. uh, you know, focal point, but then of course later on in the years, or even you know, during the PBIL, uh, you uh, days, basketball, basketball was prominent as well. Uh, but we've had track. Oh, yeah. And various other, you know, right. but, but but outside of that, you know, you, you mentioned something about the lack of resources and how we have to protect uh, Yates. 
but at the same time, you talked about unity. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I've, I've learned and noticed, man, is, is that over the years, and not it's not mutually exclusive to Yates. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, it's applicable to a lot of uh, African-American schools, particularly, that we're always under attack. Always. Always under attack by ex primarily external forces, but sometimes internal, internal forces as well. <laughs> but I'm saying that to say that there's nothing wrong with being on the defense because we're always being attacked. That's right. But we also have to figure out ways to be offensive. Exactly. Because there's this saying, as you know, defense wins championship. Right. But you can't win a game without scoring at least one point. You got to. You got to score. You a don't point. want to tie. It's yeah, you know, you can't. Have a tie. It's kind of like kissing your sister. It doesn't really work, you know. You, 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 you know, there are ways in which you can win when you don't score. Right. But but you you leave it up to somebody else to exactly. to determine that your fate. Right. And I think that uh, what I've seen over the years is we're so busy fighting and defending uh, and, and, and being reactionary that we haven't really put together a, a coalition or a cohesive unit of, of like-minded individuals that even though you cannot agree uh, personally, you don't like each other, whatever the case may be, right. you have a common goal. Right. If exactly. I want right. to move this vase from here to over to that table over there, that's the goal. Right. So... Who, who moves it? Who carries it? The how it gets there logistically? That's 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 the minutia. Right. And that's where I think sometimes we get bogged down in the what and the who. And not the, well, excuse me, the primary goal, the objective. Right. And so what are y'all's thoughts on the fact that our schools, black schools, including Yates, constantly on the, on the radar of those that want to take us out? Uh, and we're always fighting, and we stand up when it's time to stand up. We push and we prod and we fight. But what about the, the, the proactive, visionary leadership like John Henry Jack Yates had right. to see the future and plan for the future and actually come together to, to act? We go first, bro. Well, uh, uh, as you said, you talked about early unity, uh -huh. uh, coming together as one. Uh, to achieve one objective goal. And I think we can do that. We, you know, it's part of our DNA. Yeah. If you look at the uh, what uh, Reverend Jack Gates was able to do, and if we follow in his footsteps, and we say that we are uh, proud Jack Gates alumni, we love that school, we want those kids, the best for those schools. So that's the first step in realizing what's best for those kids mm -hmm. and how we can achieve that. If you said, you used an example moving that to that. Uh, and we have, as African Americans, we've always been on attack. We've always been on defense. But how do we get, to, if we look at the model that uh, Reverend Jack Yates uh, stood for and presented and moved African Americans, as, as I said earlier, seven years mm -hmm. after uh, they were emancipated, he had the foresight to uh, pull people together, to pull resources so that they could buy land where they can celebrate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that was over 150 years ago. Yeah. So that's a seed that he planted, yes. that we should be able to flourish. Mm -hmm. And as the as uh, modern day uh, alumni of Jack Gates, when I say uh, uh, we're in the 21st century, we're the 21st century yeah. Jack Gates alumni. <laughs> <laughs> we should be really flour uh, uh, watering that seed that he planted. And I think we can do it if we work together. Yeah, mm -hmm. and unify. My take on this is that we first of all. We have to learn to disagree respectfully. It's okay to disagree. I think it's a good thing to disagree because you get different perspectives. It's healthy. And you can take something from Carl and something from Dr. Boney and something from myself. And in that, you can find a, a, a middle ground that works mm -hmm. for not everybody, but the majority. Okay? Because you're never going to satisfy everybody. Not 100%. But one of the things we have to realize uh, as black people in America not just Houston, is that unfortunately racism is alive and well in America. It exists. Yeah. And it always will until we sit down and have an honest, open discussion about it. And that's not going to happen until people actually acknowledge its existence. Mm -hmm. Okay? We know it exists. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, like you said, now we have to be on the offensive. Mm -hmm. So you have to do things to prepare yourself for gentrification as mm -hmm. we say mm -hmm. okay 
Uh, we understand that some of us are being priced out of our neighborhoods. Uh, but then when you look at it, uh, I think it was my dad or one of my older brothers that said, progress will happen whether you're ready or not. Mm -hmm. So you need to get prepared, mm -hmm. okay? So we have to place more of an importance on education. And it starts at home. You cannot leave it to the teachers and the administrators. We've got to get back to that family thing to where, you know, you just don't say, hey, did you do your homework? Okay, you got to look at it. You got to find out what it is. Some of us uh, come from single parent homes, okay? So those parents have to make time to spend some time with their kids as far as stressing education. Mm -hmm. And then the kids have a responsibility to go to school and learn. You don't just go there to party and play. There's a time for that. But when you're in class, you have to come in class prepared for class and participate and learn something, mm -hmm. okay? Because at the end of the day, you're going to graduate and you have to do something else. Now, everybody doesn't have to go to college. Mm -hmm. College is not for everybody at 18 years old. Some people do better after they've been to the military or whatever, when they're more responsible, they have more discipline. One of the things I think that we need to reinstitute uh, in the black schools in particular uh, vocational classes, mm -hmm. you know, where you can actually leave high school with some type of certification that allows you to make li a living yeah, at 18, 19 wage. years old. You know, and we're not talking about minimum wage. Right. I mean, nobody can make it on seven, eight dollars. You get 15 is a struggle. Right, right. Okay. But if you at 18 can't have a certificate that allows you to be a diesel mechanic, an auto mechanic, a uh, photographer, or uh, uh, electrician, HPV, yeah, right. electrician where well, you can go and actually get a job. I think that speaks to part of the problems we have in our community about kids getting out wanting things and resorting to crime, uh, uh, illegal uh, methods of, of getting money. Uh, if you, uh, one of the things I agree with Biden on is that if, if you have a job, a job is more than a paycheck. It has to do with your integrity. Mm -hmm. It's like when I bring this check home, okay, it's not as much as Carl's because Carl is rich. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Super. But I, I, I have money that I work for. Yeah. And that's in part, it gives me a sense of pride, a sense of self esteem, and it allows me to set reasonable, achievable goals so I can progress. So, so gentlemen, you all graduated from Yates, but you graduated. Yes. So, why do you even care? to stay so involved and engaged, I mean, you're done with the high school. You're no longer there. So why is it so important to you all to, to continuously stay engaged as an alumni of, of Yates High School? First of all, uh, I, uh, it's as I said earlier, it's part of my DNA. My parents, uh, I mean, my mother, my father, my, uh, my aunts and uncles, and cousins, all of with the uh, Jack Yates High School. And we created a village. And once something is embedded in your part of your DNA, it just won't leave, you know? It's a, a, a DNA with me. I learned so much at Jack Gates. And I remember the teachers who saw something in me that I didn't see in myself. Mm. And they nurtured me. So it's like uh, going back, giving back to someone who invested in you. And during those early days, we had a village. We truly had a village of people, uh, like us, who would know that I, who would have thought then, you know, I was uh, uh, kind of a wild kid, you know, I would be sitting here today. Uh, that you would be the Carl Davis. <laughs> the one and only Carl Davis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, like I said. International travel. <laughs> Low travel. Low travel. <laughs> A few trips every night. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. A few trips every night. Baby. Don't you have one as soon as you leave there? <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Go you ahead. Know, I, but, you know, they invested in, in me, and, and I feel like it's it's my duty and my charge to give back and make sure that those kids who walk the same halls that I did have the same opportunities that I had. Because if you, you take your marbles and go on, if you're successful and don't look back, what have you done? Mm -hmm. And I believe in giving back, and that's why I believe in, like I say, uh, Jack Gates is part of my DNA. Yes, yes. That's, and, a, that's just, a t shirt. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. Just to piggyback on what he said, I, I agree with the giving back. You, you have to reach back and grab your brother and pull him up. Mm -hmm. uh, you cannot do that if you don't 
teach them about their history. Uh, they're more willing to follow if they understand. It's like if you teach a child to do something, you just say do it, and he wants to know why. If you explain to him why you do this in a certain way, they're more apt to do it. So now you have to reach back and, and give to the community. A lot of these kids, well, most of the kids that, that come out now, they don't know us because we're too old. But the thing is, if you teach them their history, you instill a sense of pride, of self-esteem, mm -hmm. and you understand this is where I come from. This is why you say Jack Yates and people's heads turn. Mm -hmm. you, you wear a Jack Yates t-shirt, uh, you know, Montana, which is where I went play college ball, mm -hmm. and people know about that now. That that this name is famous all over this nation. Yeah, what all over the world? But yeah, and and, and there's yeah, especially after this this tragedy with George Floyd, mm -hmm. you have parks in Germany named after George Perry mm -hmm. Floyd Jr. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's it's a way to give back and to perpetuate the legacy, which is important because, like I said earlier, you cannot go know where you're going if you don't know where you've been. You have a sense of pride about yourself when you know this is where I came from. This is what my name came from. These are the people that preceded me. Mm -hmm. And so now that pride fills up in you, not to the point that you're arrogant and overbearing, but you have a, a, a sense of uh, a goal, a perspective in your life. And that's what's important. And like I said, it's incumbent on us. Now, now I will say that, that there is some level of arrogance. That we have I think that's necessary. Yeah. Now, but, but, I mean, let's be clear. We are Jack Yates High School. And, and that's necessary yeah, to be exactly. at this level. Exactly. You know, when you were Jack so, Yates, you got to yeah. have a little you know bit of swag about you. And, and every now and then we arrogant. cross that line from confidence to arrogance. But it's necessary. It's necessary. It's, you know, it's part of our DNA. It's I, part, I, it's, it's it's part of me. <laughs> I was going to say, you know, in, in line with what we're talking about, I think about, you know, some people just get sick of us because we just so <laughs> in love mm -hmm. and, 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 and we, we bleed Jack Yates High School. We talk about it all the time. We show up in numbers. We, we talk about it and, 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 and we beam when we're talking about right. it. It's different. Right. It's not like everybody else. who And I talk to some people who can't relate. Mm -hmm. They can't understand why <laughs> we are who we are and why we are the way we are. You gotta walk those halls. You, you gotta walk those halls. Walk those halls. Walk those halls. Right. You never understand, and, it, and truly, it is in in most of our DNA. But then, to your point, there's a lot of individuals. It's not in their DNA, or that's at true. least, well, it's in their DNA, but they haven't tapped in that's, that's, truly that's into the their DNA and who they truly are, having walked those halls mm -hmm. of Jackie Ace High School. So they don't have the same level of pride and, and arrogance, <laughs> or <laughs> confidence, and, right. and, and and excitement. About you know uh, you know wearing the the crimson and gold, right? And so you know how do we how do we change that if, if if at all can we can we shift that paradigm in those that may have come through the halls, graduated Yates, but don't have the same love and appreciation for our rich history? I think it goes back to what I said from the beginning. There needs to be more unity. Oh, I think we need to organize more more things where. That, that are all inclusive instead of just one class. Mm -hmm. Like Jack Gates alumni, mm -hmm. okay? And, and like you said, the picnic, uh, which I've come to several years, the JYNAA sponsor. Uh, we got people from every class. Mm -hmm. And and that that uh, drive that drove Reverend Yates to, like you said, reach back and get other people and go back into slavery. This, this is the concept that we want to perpetuate, that hey, you, have an obligation and a duty to reach back and get these young people that don't know. Okay, mm -hmm. you don't have to leave Third War to get a good education. You can give one at Jack Gates, but like I said, it takes unity and it starts at home. Yeah, parents have to get more involved. Okay, uh, the students have to be more committed. Okay, and then you have to have from. I think more from HISD, you have to figure out a way to make these courses that are getting these kids ready. You have to have qualified teachers and you have to have enough teachers at every school to teach these courses adequately, prepare the kids adequately so when they test on them, the test scores go up and they're able to get in good colleges and things. And when you have 
this orientation that we had when we came to Yates. They brought every, all of us into the auditorium, and they explained the history of Jack Yates to us, and they told us the importance of it and why you have an obligation not to just go to Jack Yates to play football, to get an education, be a, a, an, an active, uh, a progressive, productive member of your community or society in general. These are things that need to be instituted when you get to Jack Gates. As a matter of fact, you could start it in the middle schools and let them know. If you're coming to that school, this is what is expected of you. Mm -hmm. And this is what you're expected to do. And if your parents are not here, let them know that we need their help to make you a better person. And you know, I, I'm, th I'm, I'm, this is a very important discussion to have. Of course, we're talking about Jack Yates High School, uh, and as well we should. Yes. Uh, but we you know, cannot ignore the fact that as Yates goes, everybody else goes. Mm -hmm. Let's just be honest. Yes. Which puts a big bullseye on, on Jack on Yates. Jack Yates right. why, which is why we have to protect our school, preserve our legacy, get more people engaged and involved uh, as alumni and stakeholders in our community to make sure that we're doing everything proactively mm -hmm. right. to prevent the attacks that will be coming, mm -hmm. right. that are, co that are in place now, but that will be forthcoming. We know that, that there is a plan. Yes. There is a plan of action to try to, to take us out. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if we're together, if we're unified, if we're stronger together, right. it makes it that much more difficult, if not, if not impossible, mm -hmm. to do that. But again, as Yates goes, everybody else goes. Just like everybody talk about politics. As Texas goes, right. everybody else goes right. in the nation, right? right. Uh, you know, whoever wins Texas wins this or gets that. Or, so as Yates being the, I, I know Booker T. Washington is the oldest mm -hmm. high school. Uh, I know Wheatley is, is behind us. And all of these rich schools, Cashmere, Worthen, uh, but look at what they did to, to Dotson. Mm -hmm. right. Look it's at what they this. did to Ryan. Right. Look at what they did to Jones. Mm -hmm. you look know what they saying? did to Douglas. Look at what they did to right. Douglas. Right. Dunbar. Dunbar. Now, all all of the schools in Third Ward. There's, there's a systematic attack on our black schools, our feeder patterns, right. uh, and all these things. We know that, but there's a saying, how do you eat an elephant? Mm -hmm. One bite at a time. Right. You go to Golden Corral and you fill up your plate with all of the food and everything. You can't eat everything at one time. You got to eat in, in, in portions right. and, 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 you know, sparingly. But we have a lot of issues that our black schools, including Yates, are experiencing. But it's got to be a collective effort of everybody working together. The administration mm -hmm. right. at the schools, black schools have to work with the stakeholders mm -hmm. have to work with the alumni. The alumni have to work with the stakeholders and the and the administration. We got to have conversations and work with HISD. That's right. Whether we like HISD or not, they are HISD. Right. It's a necessary meeting of the, of the two uh, that to keep things going. I, I would suggest um, these different alumni from these various, like I said, those five black schools that I named. That's just five. But you can start with them. Start having meetings with each alumni from that alumni association from that school. Yes. So we can form like a, a, a coalition or something to protect the black schools in general, not just Jack Gates. Now we work individually with Jack Gates, but we can take some of the ideas that we have at Gates and some from Wheatley, whatever, and we can make it work for everybody. Because as you said, if they get Jack Gates and close Jack Gates, they're coming for Wheatley, Booker mm -hmm. T, whatever. And it's not an accident; it's a plan. I'll give you an example quickly. Jack Yates sits right here in Third Ward, just north of 45, behind Dotson. They built, what, a law enforcement school? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, over here you have, to the southwest, you have, what, Energy or something? The Energy or, High School. Okay, it's look. Too, and they're about to build a new high school for Yellowstone. Mm -hmm. Okay. Which so is a look, charter school. So you got the Yes Prep and the Kip. How about that? You, you're pulling away. So you have two schools that you just built, two new campuses you spent millions of dollars on. Mm -hmm. That are within 15 miles of each other, mm -hmm. and Jack Yates sits between them. Less why didn't you put miles. Two, miles, two miles? Two yeah, hours, three than miles. Five okay. miles. So, if, why wouldn't you put those buildings on Jack Yates campus and uh, increase their student body from what it is now to maybe 2,000 plus students, where you would have a large enrollment, you'd have various or varied programs that would attract more students, and you would perpetuate the life and legacy of that school? So, for me, from my perspective, 
that's a deliberate attempt to kill the student body. Once you kill the enrollment, you have a a legitimate reason to close the school because it's no longer financially feasible. Right. And that we know the bottom line is what everybody looks at. Exactly. Okay. So if you pay attention, you will see. I was at the last school board meeting meeting last month where I heard the, the superintendent say that some of these AP classes are not taught at every school, even though on paper it says that it's been implemented at that school. Why? Because we don't have enough qualified teachers. So the question arose, well, how do you decide? He said it depends on enrollment. Okay, if you kill the enrollment at Jack Gates, the students don't get adequate uh, teaching and right. preparation, the test scores fall low, and so now you fire the principal. Mm -hmm. Okay, because you, you say she's not doing what she needs to do to help the students get the test scores high. But I also heard one of the trustees say that the duties of the principal has not been properly articulated to the principal. Mm -hmm. So, and then uh, Dr. Bird said, that he, he was asked directly, why are the students testing, are the scores low? He said he didn't know. So if you don't know and you designed or implemented these programs, how can you hold the principal responsible? Right, mm -hmm. or so, anybody. Anybody, yeah. if you don't know. Yeah. Okay, so what I'm saying is, there's a plan in place and it's, it's being covered by what they say has been implemented and it's not really happening. But that's the point that I'm making, that we see the outcomes, mm -hmm. we see the uh, the actions being taken, mm -hmm. but we can't be naive to know that this is not the plan. Right, right. right. And so that's therefore, it. proactively, we have to come together and put together an agenda and a coalition of individuals proactively, I keep reiterating right, right. that word, to be out in front and be prepared for these types of things. You know, uh, what is uh, uh, Mike Tyson said, man, everybody got a, a plan until they get hit in the mouth. Right, right, well, right. you know, when, once you get hit in the mouth, then what you gonna do? Right. So you weren't preparing mm -hmm. for that 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 uh, that punch. Right. So if we could prepare, knowing the punches are coming, knowing that you that play, <laughs> knowing that that play is gonna be run, you know, I mean, how many times as a football, as a, as a quarterback, you knew you could read the defense right. and, and know I, what they're going to do in blitzing or whatever. That's right. And you read that so you have something in mind where you check down and change the play. Right. You audible at the line of scrimmage. Right. But the reason that you're able to do that is because you have adequate knowledge and information because you paid attention. You watch film. You right. study. Right. So this is what we have to do as a community. you got to start going to the board meetings. Mm -hmm. I must admit when I went last month, that was my first time ever going to an HISD board meeting. Well, good. And I learned so much. I wanted to speak, but I didn't know that you had to sign up yeah. ahead of time, okay? Yeah. But it was good. Like, everything happens for a reason because I sat there for three and a half hours and I listened. Mm -hmm. And that's why I learned those things to where if you have trustees on the board that are not particularly uh, in love with the programs that have been implemented and the way that they're being implemented or taught, then we have a major problem here, mm -hmm. okay? And I didn't know these things until I actually listened to the questions that they were asking. Mm -hmm. They themselves have questions about the way HISD is running thing, which I don't know the man personally, but it leads straight back to Miller House. But, but keep this in mind, too, and this is what a lot of people don't understand, because we put a lot of emphasis and focus on elected officials, mm -hmm. uh, particularly at the school board level or even certain, certain council levels. We assume that these people are experts. Right. We assume that they know what the hell they're doing. <laughs> yeah. or, or that they don't. Most of these people are elected residents. Right. Mm -hmm. They are not skilled teachers mm -hmm. or administrators exactly. or people that are educational, uh, you know, stalwarts in the community or you know in their their educational space or industry. They just are elected. You know, just like your grandma or your, your right. auntie, or you know, they, I, I want to run for office and I won based off of a popularity contest or I, I campaigned the best. Right. They get on that desk or they get that board packet, they're like drinking water through a fire hose. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they don't know what they're doing. I'm an elected official mm -hmm. and I know I deal with and have dealt with and currently deal with certain colleagues who don't come prepared to the meetings and right. it's glaring. But they are decision makers. Right, right. right. They still got to vote. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They can still decide what will and will not happen, That's whether true. they know what they're doing or know what they're talking about or even care mm -hmm. to, to do the research. Mm -hmm. So we have to do a distinction right. and understand that the power does lie in who you elect mm -hmm. to office, 
that's why, as opposed to just putting people in office that you like or who names sound like familiar, right. you know, uh, or that you, you know, who you don't like, that person could be the best person for you, uh, representing you on that day is because they know what they're talking about or they're prepared to, to dig in their heels mm -hmm. and study. Put in the work. Put in the work. Yeah. Right. A lot of people don't put in the work. They just show up to the meet right. to that's vote. True. Right. I'm here. I'm, I'm here, here. Okay. And, and that's a reality. Mm -hmm. Right, that's true. Right. So that's we true. have to we have to push, I believe, as alumni. Mm -hmm. And I'm so yeah. happy that you all are uh, Jack Yates grads and alums, but that you're so involved. I want uh, to make this comment, uh, uh, Mr. Boney, who happens to be the president of the National Alumni Association, who has revived this alumni association and uh, leading it in uh, an excellent way. I want to applaud you for your leadership, first of all, Mr. Boney, uh, your vision for the Alumni Association, and then the platform that you're providing to the Alumni Association so that we can, uh, we all love Jack Gates, but we can, can take it to another level. Mm -hmm. We're always looking for vehicles to uh, share our message and the great things that's going on Jack Gates and how proud we are of Jack Gates. But I want to commend you for taking that baton and taking us to a whole nother level. Now, I've been around a little longer than you, age-wise. <laughs> Just a little bit. Just, like, you know. Just a little bit. But, you know, you, like I say, people, uh, as I say, it's growing up as a kid, people saw something in me I didn't see in myself. Mm -hmm. I see a whole lot in you, a lot of, where you're going to take this organization. I want to applaud you publicly and say thank you for your awesome leadership of the Jack Gates National Alumni Association. And as Ted said, that he learned so much at the board meeting mm -hmm. and that uh, it was his first board meeting, but that planted a seed. Yes. Mm -hmm. And what you're doing here is planting seeds, you mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. planting seeds so that we can flourish, that, uh, make Jack Gates as strong as we want to be and be offensive. Yes. On the offense. And, right. and when I say offensive, uh, be prepared to tackle anything that comes before us. And, you know, I want to say this, mm -hmm. you know, and I thank you, Carl, mm -hmm. for the kind words. Uh, I'll be frank with you. You know, I'm always transparent. I didn't want to do this. Okay. Yeah, I didn't want to be the president of Jack Gates National Alumni Association because I knew who I was going to be working with. <laughs> <laughs> look, I ain't naive. I ain't, I ain't confused. That arrogance might I, look, I was like, like man, when, they, when, when I was asked to do this, I was like, hell no. I'll be honest. I said, That's hell true. no. I, I went to Yates. No, I, know, I, know, I know these. Well, let me not say that. <laughs> I know these individuals. Yes. <laughs> But 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 at the end of the day, man, you know, to your point, it's in me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I yeah. can't walk away from it. I can't ignore it. It's mm -hmm. in my bones. I'll let you sleep. Mm -hmm. it, it, and it won't let me. And I and I prayed about it. I did. Mm -hmm. Had to. And, uh, <laughs> and 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 talk to to some people, man. And and keep in mind, uh, in taking on the the mantle of this, we were defunct. We mm -hmm. had That's not true. been functioning. That is so true. Uh, didn't have a bank account, didn't mm -hmm. have the, the business set up, the entity set mm -hmm. up. Uh, so I had to actually work with my, my fellow cohorts to, to rebuild mm -hmm. uh, what had already ha had been established. But I say all that to say um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a labor of love. Mm -hmm. yeah. right. And right. it's a heavy lift. Yes, it We've is. had, uh, you know, I'm so proud that we've been able to establish for the first time ever uh, a scholarship amen, fund, amen. Uh, you know, through the alumni association. Not set, there are a lot of other classes, right. that, uh, like the Fabulous Fifties and others, that do scholarships. Mm -hmm. But this is a a, 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 a humongous li uh, effort mm -hmm. where we've been able to provide thousands and thousands of scholarships for kids. And to go let to me school. just say this. It was on his leadership. He got a major contribution for this uh, scholarship fund. Yeah, nearly thirty thousand dollars. That is correct. That is correct. Uh, yeah. To get this thing kicked yeah, off, kicked off That's uh, through my relationships, mm -hmm. and then you know, you know, we named it after you mentioned George Perry Floyd Jr. Named it after him, just as a, a way to kind of focus on social justice and have the kids when they apply for these scholarships do an essay centered around the importance of social justice, so as to not let his martyrdom be forgotten, but also how we can move forward and grow and build upon that. But also, uh, there have been some things that I've been disappointed in uh, that I still have as a vision as uh, this the president that uh, I'd like to see 
come to fruition. Of course, uh, increased membership is one. Uh, so that, you know, one thing, two things people respect, protect, particularly those in decision-making positions. They respect money mm -hmm. and they respect numbers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's true. And if you got both, yeah. that's, that's even more power. Works out real well. But. <laughs> so I want to increase our membership, not just for the sake of having members. I don't care nothing about just having members, just saying that we touted we got X number of members. But I understand the importance of coming together and showing up when it's time to show up, when you can call on them, mm -hmm. that number of folks and say, be at the board meeting mm -hmm. right. or be at this protest or mm -hmm. be at this event or come to support or ask for or demand or uh, request this these types of programs or initiatives. The more numbers we got and we mm -hmm. show up in mass, mm -hmm. then that's what happens at the Bel Air. Mm -hmm. That's what mm -hmm. happens at the Lamar. Right. They, it just doesn't happen mm -hmm. because they Bel Air and Lamar. Mm -hmm. They have key stakeholders, right. mm -hmm. alumni, mm -hmm. boosters, mm -hmm. people that with money and influence mm -hmm. right. that are pushing, prodding, mm -hmm. and demanding that this be done for them. On and they're the not gonna, on said. the offensive, and they're not going to be ignored. I've, I've I've sought to work with the school, and actually remember when we went over to the school call, and I I, I had an adopt a freshman initiative. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. The plan for that was because there were numbers that had come out stating that uh, we were losing quite a few freshmen from freshman year to senior year. Right. So I'm like, well, the only way I feel pro offensively mm -hmm. that we can go and attack that situation is if alumni show up mm -hmm. and the other stakeholders, partners, community partners, be at that school, adopt some of the freshmen. Mm -hmm. Right. Mentor them Mentorship. from 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 beginning to end. Mm -hmm. Find out where the gaps are. And many of these kids started talking and expressing their home life challenges and situations that was going on, whereby school was the least important thing on their mind. Mm -hmm. Survival. Some of these people were homeless, right? And so being abused. It's just a lot. And and so that's one of the things. But but it takes again that unified collective voice to move that forward. Another thing uh, that I would like to do is we're, we're celebrating Founders Day today. Mm -hmm. The alumni as a whole should take ownership of celebrating our legacy, our history. And that's why the Jack Yates National Alumni Association has taken that under our wing to try to make it an even greater thing. And, and we're going to build upon that. Mm -hmm. uh, the thing that excites me the most in, in, in the midst of all of the challenges Call and Ted is is the fact that we have upside. Right. We can we can go up. Right. Right. That's true. That's we can true. go higher. Mm -hmm. We don't have to just sell. Uh, -huh. uh You know, and I'm, I'm excited about the fact that we got alumni like you all who are engaged and involved. We have this initiative with the football field. Right. Yes. Call. Speak on that and where we are on that. And, and Ted, you can speak on that too. Uh, after. You know, uh, we had a golden opportunity uh, to. Uh, to improve the quality of life for Jack Gates High School. Uh, we submitted a bid uh, with the NFL grant, uh, list grant, to get $250,000 toward Jack Gates football field. Uh, and we, in partnership with the Houston Texans, who provided $200,000. Uh, and we had a discussion with our County Commissioner uh, Rodney Ellis who was instrumental in us securing the turf. Every year, that turf at the NRG is donated to a school. Very seldom is it donated to a, a school of color because uh, a lot of times we, we don't have the resources. Mm -hmm. But we took on that challenge because we know the greatness of Jack Yates. And so uh, Commissioner Ellis has designated Yates as the uh, recipient of the turf from the NRG from last year, which wasn't played on much because we were in COVID. Mm -hmm. So it's not that much wear and tear on that field. Uh, we talked with Change Happens. We pulled together a group, a consortium of uh, people, Jack East National Alumni Association, Change Happens, 88 Chump, uh, Houston Society for Change, all came together to apply for that grant. And let me just share with you, Je Jeff is our president, National Association President. Mm -hmm. Reached out to him. He readily said, I'm on board because of his love for the school. Right. Uh, my, my nonprofit, you know, my love for the school, came to the table. And 80 Chump was a group that was formed uh, by George Floyd's teammates. Okay. After what had happened to him, they wanted to come together as one unit and have a voice. So we all came together 
uh, to apply for this grant. And Change Happens, which is a community-based organization in Third Ward, been around over 30-some years, and have a lot of social service programs that reaches into the community, help improve the quality of life of those students, those kids in the community, serves as our physical agent. We applied for that grant, received the two hundred fifty thousand from NFL grant, uh, grassroots grant, and then the Texans, who uh, is partnering with us, donated two hundred thousand, uh, and then we've been raising additional funds. But according to the agreement that we, uh, 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 in order to get the grant, Hellas uh, has been designated as the installer of the field. And that's one of the challenges we have because of the uh, cost of insulation. And we know we can do it. We know we can do it uh, as a community. As many Jack Gates alumni that are out there uh, in the school, love that school. You go to the games, you see crimson and gold. Oh, yeah. You see they have large numbers. But if we come together as one, we can make this a reality for those kids. Uh, the cost is uh, almost a, a million dollars. We have uh, over 500000 thanks to the $100,000 uh, we received from Congresswoman Lee, appropriation from Congress. We received, let me just give you a breakdown of what has been received so far. 250,000 from Liz, 200,000 from the Texans, 100,000 from uh, Congresswoman Lee's appropriation from Congress. So that gives, put us over halfway the goal. But we can do it though, we can definitely do it. We are left with roughly 400,000 short, but if we work together, we can get that done. And, uh, and we have a plan of action. We have a help. plan of action. Mm -hmm. We're in the middle of our fundraising campaign. Uh, you can go on Change Happens website. You can make donations online. We have a uh, packet, uh, uh, sponsorship packet, where you can donate different levels. But we want grassroots people. Right. Those right. folks from Jack Gates High School. If you can give ten dollars, you know, a month. Right. Uh, right. Uh, and, and, and we want the mm -hmm. we want the community to know that this is nothing nefarious. Nothing. No. No. No, nothing going on where money's being misappropriated no, or none mismanaged of none of or whatever. This is probably the most reputable uh, entity that you could have. And if the Texans is giving the money, yes. you know they ain't going to just uh, throw money at the wind. No, they're going uh, to vet everybody that they're engaged and involved in. But, you know, we can't focus on uh, those that don't want to contribute or don't right. see this as a value uh, or can find a reason, you know, why this is an issue or a problem or not to do it. We want to work with those that want to, to do something to help. You know, whatever, whatever you can do, you know, is, is a value to, to, to us, $5, $100, you know, a million dollars, whatever it is, but we want to get this, this done for the sake of the school. And we, the students. And, and the, the students. students and, and the community and as a whole. And the community as a whole. And, and, and as I said, if in 1872, uh, Jack Gates can pull the people together and raise a thousand dollars. Why we can't do it in 2023? Yes, and we can. We can do and it. We'll. We can do it, and we will do it. And it's because we, the pride in us, as a Jack Gates alumni, though, and we, who walk those halls of Jack Gates, can do it. You know, we got that can-do spirit. Right. And you know, uh, life is not a, a smooth staircase. There's gonna be bumps in the road, mm -hmm. but we can overcome any obstacle because we are proud Jack Gates alumni. You know, I want to say something else, uh, Carl. You know, there's a lot of people who do a lot of things for Jack Gates High School. Some of them are unsung heroes. Mm -hmm. They don't uh, get uh, press releases mm -hmm. uh, shared on them. They, they are behind the scenes. They contribute, they mm -hmm. give, they mentor uh, in, in so many ways. So shout out and kudos and congratulations to all of you who deserve to be celebrated yes. for all of the work you have done and continue to do and will do for Yates. But I, I want to just bring up something of importance as well. Uh, we talked about, you talked about trades and, and, and vocation earlier. And uh, we have two major magnet programs yes. at Jack Yates. Uh, one of them, of course, is our, our uh, historic and, uh, you know, I guess, uh, world-renowned, award-winning School of Communications. Sure. People have come out of that school of communications, such as your Roland Martins and many others. Uh, then you have another one, uh, which is a program, a magnet program that really needs to be highlighted. Because I believe that if those students, those families who are considering where they're gonna send their child to school, know about the significance of having this magnet program at Jack Yates High School, they would put their 
kids, not only at Yates, but in that program. And I want to thank Carl Davis. Uh, he and I served on the Port of Houston Advisory Board years ago. Mm -hmm. And it came up about uh, maritime being in schools. And the only school of focus that they wanted to have a maritime program at was Austin High School. Uh, and we have nothing but love for our brown brothers and sisters, mm -hmm. right. um, but we have needs over in the African American community as well. Yeah. And so we pitched, pushed, mm -hmm. and demanded that they have something similar in the black community. Okay. And so the question was where? Well, we wanted in Yates. Right. Well, Yates already has a school of communications. Well, I don't care. And? And, yeah, <laughs> I don't care. care. You know, so other schools have <laughs> More magnet programs too. Right. Right. But we wanted at Jack Yates High School. And there was some pushback. Yeah, it was. There was a lot, lot of pushback, of pushback. Uh, lot of pushback. Uh, about about doing that. Mm -hmm. But we pushed mm -hmm. and pushed and pushed to now we have a maritime program mm -hmm. over, uh, program over there. But then when we when the program got put over there, it wasn't even funded mm -hmm. properly. That's mm -hmm. correct. That is correct. Because they were right. trying to do their their best, in my opinion, to kill it mm -hmm. and not fund it and shortchange us. Uh, but they were giving all the money to the Brown community school, right. Austin. We, you know, thanked Carl. Carl stepped and up the, to the plate significantly. Well, you know, it was a teamwork. You know, he passed the baton to me. I passed the baton. <laughs> right, right, right. But, but, but you got it done. But that's correct. And yeah. it takes teamwork to get right. things done. And and as Jeff talked about that program, it, it started because they were investing two million dollars to set up a maritime program at Texas Southern University. Yes. Mm -hmm. What close? What school is close to? Texas right across the street. Oh, right I think across you could street. cross the street and yeah, down right. Right. Campus. Right. <laughs> you know, you don't have any. Uh, 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 the Brown School is, is several miles from Yank. So why uh, Texas Southern? So why? Uh, what school would be more appropriate to right. have that program? And then you can feed them into uh, Texas Southern program. Exactly. And so we yeah. felt that it was befitting, mm -hmm. and uh, our kids deserve those opportunities Absolutely. too. Absolutely right. And so uh, Jeff. He throw me the baton, I throw him the baton. <laughs> right. But I bring that up uh, for this reason and this reason alone. When it comes to Jack Yates High School, there are no big eyes or mm -hmm. little U's. Right. It doesn't matter what you've done mm -hmm. or what you can do. No matter how big or small, it makes a difference. Yeah. So a lot of people probably don't even know that story about the Maritime Academy in Yates. And, right. and I could go on and share a lot of other stories too right. that, you know, uh, have impacted the school that that I know Carl and I have been been a part of, but but that's neither here nor there. It's not about us, right? It's about what each and every one of us as alumni can do to improve our school, and not only alumni but any stakeholder in the community, mm -hmm. any business in in Third Ward who wants to contribute to that field project or whatever. Everybody can play their part yes, right. in yes. their role in making a difference at Yates High School, whether it's mentoring a kid, yes. whether it's uh, uh, giving a, a pizza party for honor roll students, whether it's uh, buying the uh, art supplies for the art department, uh, whether it's helping people with uniforms, just like the Jack Yates National Alumni helped to purchase lights Yes. For the football, football field, football although the right. lights were uh, sufficient, they're looking at another alternative. But these are things that we do mm -hmm. that we ain't looking to get no praise and, mm -hmm. and, and press release on. But we want the community to know that we're vested. Yes, right. yes. Right. We're here. We we're got vested. The ball rolling in and it. we're moving. And we need you to join us to make it happen. I ain't gonna always be the president of the Jack Hayes National Alumni Association. And my biggest fear and concern is it falling in the hands of somebody that doesn't love mm -hmm. Yates like I love it. Right. And doesn't love uh, uh, focusing on the fact that we preserve and protect our legacy, our students, and our school. And so that is my hope and prayer that we get the right people to join JYNA. Yes. 35, what, 30, $35 a year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, they have also life memberships, but be a part. Join committees, help us grow this organization. Help us accomplish the goal of of, of getting the money for this football field. Help us meet the needs of our student body, whatever those needs are. Help us work with the administration uh, to in, in order to help them meet their needs and to protect that school. Help get the grades and the test scores and whatever up. We have to do it together. And each person, no matter how big or small, 
No matter what you did in school, how bad you was, right. whether I mean, you barely graduated, yeah. whatever the case may be. But you walked those you halls. You walked yeah. those halls right. of Jack Yates High School. So you also is in your DNA, and you should be vested as well. I'll let yeah. you have a few final words, gentlemen. Well, I, I just want to uh, uh, go back to the point you made about being uh, on the offensive. Yes. Uh, my niece, and I have to mention her name, her name is Quanda Gilliam. Mm -hmm is a registrar of Jack Yates. And mm -hmm. we talk all the time about Jack Yates. She's not a Jack Yates graduate, but I've schooled her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she's and educated. So, she's educated. And so, <laughs> yeah. And so uh, uh, we talk about different things that the kids need. And, and she said one of the things that they really need is not only help at home from parents, but they need a system of trust, mm -hmm. uh, stability at that school, which is why we fought so bringing Principal Guillory back. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the other things that they need is that we need to press, like you said, being on the offensive, we need to press HISD to take a look mm -hmm. at each school individually and not just grade them across the board. And mm -hmm. I know that may be a state legislative mandate or whatever, but if there's any kind of way, I think there are mitigating factors that are specific to Jack Yates. Uh, and maybe some other schools, but I speak for Jack Yates right now. Mm -hmm. You have to consider those things, how these kids, some of these kids are, are transit. Some mm -hmm. of them are homeless. That's families true. break that's up. True. You know, I'm, I'm everything is stable, but then all of a sudden, I'm in a shelter. Mm -hmm. Don't you think that's going to affect that child's mental capacity mm -hmm. and his ability to learn? And so we have monies that have been allocated for therapeutic counseling that have not been sent to the school, according to my knowledge. Mm -hmm. And you know, you, you can't expect these people to be a general counselor, a teacher, a babysitter, or whatever, and you're not paying them for that. If you have money for that, then you should have somebody on that campus that deals with that. Mm -hmm. And then you can hold the principal responsible for making sure that that happens. Yes. These are things that, that we need to look at that will help our kids understand the importance of school. And instill pride in the fact that I got this special treatment, concern, and love from Jack Yates High School. Mm -hmm. yeah. I didn't have to go to Lamar, whatever, and, and I'm not putting down Lamar because my younger son finished from Lamar. Mm -hmm. My oldest one finished from Yates. So, but the, the thing is, we need the community to get involved. It's just like this football field, okay? We have professional athletes that, that finished from Jack Yates, okay? Uh, we would think that they would have the financial resources more than people like myself. Mm -hmm. Okay, if you can get you and five of your friends, if each one of you get three or four guys that you know in the NFL. Hey man, we have a school that's named after a social justice martyr, George Perry Floyd Jr. And we're struggling because we're in a community that lacks resources. Mm -hmm. And we need your help. Mm -hmm. what, what, what can you do to help? And, and give them, we'll, we will put the information out there from Change Happens on how they can contribute. Mm -hmm. We know that professional athletes basically have more money than the average working guy, okay? They are willing to help if, if Carl tells me he needs $1,000, I'm more apt to give it to Carl because that's my friend and I know he's a straight up guy mm -hmm. and I don't really have to vet Carl and I trust Carl's word. Mm -hmm. Word of mouth is the best av advertisement in the world. Mm -hmm. So what, we're, what I'm saying here personally, you are a graduate of Jack Yates High School, and you were fortunate enough to make it to the NFL, and you have the financial ability to donate. Please donate, but in addition to that, get someone you know that has that type of financial ability to donate so we can get this field there, because it's not just for the football players at Yates. Primarily it is, but it's a community field. That's in the name, mm -hmm. to where you can implement little league programs that get these kids. Man, football is more about... Uh, life skills. Yes, I yes. coach Little League football. We teach life skills. We teach teamwork, preparation, whatever. All of these things carry over into the workplace. So mm -hmm. these are the type of things that will be taught in Little League programs at that school, and you can help get this started by reaching out to your fellow professional athletes and getting donations so we can get this completed. And yes. I want to close out that uh, uh, that's a very valid point to take the lead to those who play uh, sports at Yates High School. Not only football players, but basketball players, anybody yeah. who played and excelled. But then we also have doctors, lawyers, exactly. who may not uh, have the time, but have the uh, wherewithal to make contributions. Mm -hmm. So this is a uh, 
call out to all Jackie's alumni, whether you a doctor, your lawyer, or whatever profession you in, uh, and you walk the halls of Jack Gates, we're asking you to come out and support Jack Gates High School in making this feel a reality for the students of Jack Gates High School. As I said earlier, that uh, people saw something in me that I didn't see in myself. I see a lot in those kids that are at Gates High School, and it's upon us to make an investment in those kids. If we invest in this field, that you don't know where they, their future will lead to. Right. Right. So I, again, I, I just first of all, thank you, Carl Davis. Uh, thank you, Ted, for being on today, man. I really appreciate y'all for being here on our Founders Day. Yes, right. and we right. want to thank you, Mr. Bone, yeah. for the invitation. And, and, and I, I want to just, uh, you know, kind of close with mm -hmm. the fact that, you know, you heard the charge, the, the challenge. We need you. Uh, we encourage you to get involved. Get in, you know, kick the tire, squeeze the fruit, join the organization, whatever. Right. But just get involved. Yes. You know, it's, right. it's, there's a place for you. Uh, to help this uh, alumni grow and uh, be more stable and solid because you brought up something about the needs of, of our school and the students. Uh, I, one of the, the visions that I also have before I, I leave, I want to create this internal portal uh, of needs uh, that mm -hmm. are need-based uh, uh, asks of the school. Uh, we shouldn't have to do a, a GoFundMe or a quick mm -hmm. little mm -hmm. pass the hat every time there's a need reactionary-wise we should have a portal where where we could be able to ask or say these are the needs I know we're gonna have going into the next year right. for our kids, yes. for our departments, mm -hmm. for our you know programs, whatever, whether it's the cheerleaders or the mm -hmm. uh, uh, the band or the football team or the basketball team or the ba baseball, softball. Everybody should have a, a portal of, of, of requests and needs. If it's I know we got to ask for toiletries mm -hmm. and all kind of just so if we can just again become a lot more proactive, right, a yeah. lot more uniformed, a lot more together. Uh, in and our, stay on and, the offensive. And stay on the offensive. Yes. We can start addressing some of these mm -hmm. things proactively, and then we can fight the bigger fights. And mm -hmm. it's kind of like the book of Nehemiah in the Bible where he was looking to rebuild the wall of Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. It says that he had some, some haters, mm -hmm. Tobias and Sam Ballot, and they were looking to, to harm them. And it says that they worked uh, with one with a with a tool in one hand mm -hmm. and a weapon in the other, mm -hmm. and that's what we gotta have. Right. We gotta we we gotta we'll keep go with, we all, we already got a weapon in our hand. <laughs> right. You know, we get attacked, but we gotta start having better tools yes. in right. yes. our toolbox right. to work with. But anyway, gentlemen, uh, we can go on and on and on talking <laughs> oh, about our deal with Jack Gates High School again. I want to remind everybody the class of 1991, the best class ever, <laughs> Jack Gates High School, and of course, it's debatable. we are straight <laughs> we are straight out. Oh, Jack, Jack Gates, Gates High School, High School. Yes, established indeed. today, February 8, 1926, 97 years ago, y'all. Hey, we want to say a shout out, man. We appreciate John Henry, Reverend John Henry Jack Gates for his legacy and for allowing us to be a part of a school named after him. God bless y'all. That'll do it. ForwardTimes.com, JeffreyLBoney.com. Don't argue with me. Third <laughs> <laughs> one.